Hello, welcome back. Good evening. Uh, last time I tried this, it went south. We live in the, you know, west coast. I don't want to go south. I hope tonight we got a couple people in the chat can tell me if it's going south so we can shut it down and turn it off. Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome back. This is George, your host. Uh, welcome to Aquaball's channel. And hello, Collaboration Curiosities. Hello, uh, Pride More Fish and More. Scott's Aquatic, hello. And we got Patty saying, oh, wow. Okie dokie. Good day, good day. Hello. S, welcome, my brother. Uh, I hope uh, if it starts messing up the internet, let me know. Uh, like, you know, in and out. You is not that great. Just sitting here, want to kick back and talk about fish. Hello, Colored Guppy, my brother. Welcome, welcome. How is the, uh, the you know, the internet doing? Is it cutting in and out or am I, am I still coming in loud and clear? Uh, you know, when I started the hobby, a long time ago. Let's go ahead and start talking. Uh, I got a few people here. Uh, we can do this right now. Paul C. Hello, hello. Welcome. So when I started the hobby, I asked in the chats of a bunch of people, you know, like one of them replied to me. One of them was, uh, what's his name? Ah. <sighs> It's not important. I don't remember. Anyway, he's he's famous. Everybody knows him. Uh, I don't follow up that channel anymore because I didn't learn much from it other than cutting plants, putting it down. That's what I... Sorry. And then some names of the plants. Uh, but I asked them, I said, hey, uh, is there secrets in the hobby? It's okay for not doing good. Okay, so I'm going to explain to you what's going on last time's internet really quick. I apologize about that. I had to delete that stream. So last time, uh, this is what happened. I was using the Wi-Fi in the house. And it's a new Wi-Fi, new modem. Uh, I guess they downgrade me instead of giving better internet. So I asked people, I said, hey, is there any secrets in the hobby? This is important. Listen, okay. It's going to come out slowly. But that's the topic of the night. I already have it in my mind. It's not going anywhere. Um, they said, no, just do your water changes. Just do your water changes. Okay. The other day I was in a Facebook chat. I said, guess what I've learned? I've learned how to breed angelfish in the pandemic. What did you do? Somebody said to me and uh, replied back saying that, hey, is that so hard to put a water in the glass box and put a filter with air and put two fish in there that will breathe? Yeah, I wish it was that easy. So let me tell you something, guys. I wish it was that easy. It needs knowledge. Knowledge takes time. Time takes money and effort, and you have to do it. If you don't do it, you don't learn. That's pretty much it. Someone like me, I am here today to pass on the knowledge. I want you to learn. Open your minds. Be open-minded. I'm not saying this is the way. I'm saying this is what I learned. I'm going to explain. Hello, 44 Meg guy. Welcome, welcome. So, guys, fish breeding, it's not that simple. It's not two fish putting in the box and throw some plants in there in the air tank and change water and that's it. No, it's not. Some fish are easy. Some fish are not like that. Totally not like that. So the, ba the way to breed, in my opinion, the way it works for me is to mimic where the fish comes from. Meaning, give them the right environment, the right temperature, the right water chemistry and the fish will go ahead and breed for you. That is not the end of the story. 
that you're still not successful. We all know this. There's more. What the most important secret is, you need guts, guys. Guts to mess around with the fish, to try new things, to try doing this, to try and doing that. Not just following what George is saying or this guy did. Muhammad Ali wasn't just the greatest boxer in the world. There was other boxers before him, and there's always going to be boxers coming up after Muhammad, and they're going to punch the wall and go through it. Like I'm not the only fish guy out there. There's billions of them out there. As many as I don't have hair in my head, there's people have fish aquarium boxes, but they don't all know how to breed fish like I'm learning. <laughs> Take a, a taste of that. So, I'm not an angry person. I'm just playing around, guys. Uh, don't take me too serious, okay? <laughs> I learned a lot. What I learned is like, I failed so many ways. I tried this, I tried that, you know. Uh, I lost a bunch of, uh, like, I, I put a piece of grandma stew together. They bred and then. All of a sudden, the male guys are like, whoa, what's going on? So there's a technique. Not a lot of people know. Once you have the breeding successfully, the you see that uh, female guarding their eggs, and you see there's eggs, uh, not just like guarding a cave, enticing the male over. No. Guarding a cave, then you go ahead and take the male out. After a few months later, you can take the female out. She won't eat the babies. Trust me. Those are her pride and joy. If there's any other, any other daughter fish in the tank, like guppies or rainbow fish that they won't eat fry, the mama is going to push them away. She's going to say, hey, get out of here. Back off, you know. Uh, so other things like water changes, we all know. We have to do it. And to raise fish faster, not faster, meaning like the right way, the happy way is probably you need to change. When you feed them five to six times a day, you need to change your water every two to three days, minimum 15%. But do it. If you mess up, the, the growth goes down, the deformity starts, they're not all healthy. The, the babies, when you know they were fry, there's a technique. So what I'm doing is this. What's working for me, guys? I breed a pair of uh, angels. I pick my males and females. I put them in a 20-gallon high. They breed. The minute I see the fry swimming around, I let the mom and dad do that thing. If they eat one, two, three, three times, it's okay. They're going to try it again. They're going to have babies swimming around. So when the fry is swimming around, eating the brine shrimp and the flakes that I'm giving them, I go ahead and take the mom and dad out. No more taking fry out for me. Why? Well, you're changing the chemistry of the water from where they are born to somewhere new. If you unless have a whole entire system hooked up, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the hobbyists. I'm talking about farmers, okay? I'm not, totally, those guys are all over my head, man. They've done this like a million years ago, but they don't come up and talk about it. There's few people in Asia, very knowledgeable. I've been following lately, learning about them, about guppy genetics. So I want to uh, dip my hands into the guppy genetics too. Guppy breeding is <laughs> woo, so hard. I didn't know it was that hard. People, don't think that you're breeding guppies. Some of us, some of people out there call what I have in my place junk, trash. What I don't know what junk and trash is, but I'm going to learn. I just started. So I thought, you know, I shouldn't have guppy because, oh, everybody's doing it. No, no, no. I'm going to do it differently, guys. I'm going to prove it. There's people out there done it. Uh, I'll talk about that later, how I'm doing the guppies, but I'm not into that yet. I'm into the angels and to apistogramas. Right now, I'm breeding those successfully. I am breeding a lot of uh, African cichlid shellies. And also, anybody has any question about shellies, African cichlid, angelfish, put it down in the comment. No problem. So, guys. I take your mom out and daddy out into another tank. That is actually a great thing to do. 
If you take him from softer water, put him in harder water, not too big difference, you know, like 7.0 pH from, let's say, 6.8, 6.7, it won't hurt him that much. Into the harder, ha ha harder water, and the temperature has to be the same. But you can't, oh, you can't take it from hard to softer water, dump him in there right away. That will harm him. It will burn gills and cause problems. So, hello, Mardul. Welcome, welcome. I am so happy I found your channel. I told you where I found it. Uh, what's his name? Dan and Jack. Oh, I love that guy. You know, they're, they're a father and son. I, You know why I love him? I tell you, I'm jealous of him because I, I have a son the same age as Jack. And I wish my son can come sit here next to me. And while I'm talking to you guys and learn a little bit about fish, this will open his mind up into new things. All he does all day long, he's in his computer with his friends. He's talking to his girlfriends and stuff like that. You know, kid thing. And But he will grow out of that. I know there's always, you know, I was, when I first came here, uh, I was into the same thing, internet and all that. And girls, I got married. I'm an adult now. Old part. <laughs> lost the hair. Lost the teeth. It's okay. I'm a happy, proud daddy of three beautiful boys oh four I'm, i lost one uh when he was seven weeks old but you know stuff happened thanks george and jack and dan are awesome Madhul, you got some nice fish tanks i'm jealous <laughs> Uh, people say they're jealous of me. No, I love seeing you guys' thing. I watch every, all day long, I'm YouTuber. I'm a true YouTuber. I watch YouTube all day long. The TV inside, uh, let me tell you what's on. Bluey, Mickey Mouse, <laughs> my uh, four-year-old is in charge of the 55-inch TV, 60-inch, I believe. Uh, the whole entire thing. So he's playing, you know, watching this thing. The minute he wakes up at like 10 o'clock in the morning, he takes over. Kids are amazing. So anyway, uh, after I take the mom and dad, those angels need to be cared. Uh, right here on top of this tank, I have some fright. Surprisingly, they are growing super fast. Why? Because I'm doing it the right way. Doing the water changes. Before I've slagged, don't slag. Slagging is not cool. Meaning like every once a week I did it. It's not working. Not working. If you don't have a system that is all hooked up to each other. And like uh, one kind of like, let's say 15, 16 tanks all hooked up to a sump and the sump has like a biomedia in there turning biomedia if you have that system guys you are lucky you got dough okay uh i don't got that luxury i have bucket bucket and tank tank which i prefer that way because one gets one tank gets sick not all tank gets sick that was my idea and my long friend my fish tank that I really love, my, my fish store that I live, I really love, the LFS, I told me not to do that. He said, because you get a lot of problems, George. He said, trust me, you don't want to do it. Stay the way you are. I'm listening. I'm happy so far with what I'm doing. You know, a little harder work, but it's hard work pays off. You guys know what I'm saying. So have the guts. Don't be scared. Now, today, I scooped out the mom and dad of the avatars. You saw the avatars. I have about 150 baby fry. Uh, I took them out, put them in a 50 gallon. Now, when I was scooping out, I tried not to take any fry, but I still did take two of them, which I'm going to leave in the new tank because I, I don't want to take them back hurting the babies. I took them into the new tank. Just leave them there. Two babies, it's not a big deal. But keep an eye. If they don't eat them, the parents... When they have a new batch, if those guys are alive, please don't leave them there because the brothers will eat the babies. Everybody. Like the whole entire, when they hatch, you won't see eggs anymore. Brothers are going to eat them. 
if you let that happen by mistake, those brothers and sisters will be really, really good quality fatties. And they're like, instead of mom and eat, mom and dad eat it, they're like caviar. They're like, really, the fish fries, eggs are full of nutrients. The best thing they can eat. <laughs> That's why fish, like angel fish, they try multiple times. It's okay. It's totally messed up, but it's okay. <laughs> It's that's how it is in the wild. Why you worry about it? Let it happen. It's thing, you know. Let it do its thing. Your fish is healthy. Your water is clean. Let it let it happen. Okay. So, Mississippi Hippie, welcome. Um, what else? So the Africans. Almost everyone, I don't use either in the tank. Why? In the winter time, it goes cold in Africa. Water, some of the tanks I have, I put heater, I killed. I killed them. Like literally, uh, they didn't like the heat. Even it was like in his 84, the Africans didn't like it. For me, they, they didn't work. My Africans are in a 77, 78. That's the temperature. They breed and they're happy. Uh, uh, I was like, in hurry to breed those Africans, they breed, man. They, eventually, if you t have a patient, they will breed. You know, some of them are taking whatever, but eventually they'll do it. Excuse me. Hello, Chewy. Welcome, welcome. Um, I had you in mind today because I checked my phone and I seen a message. I checked the message. It's, it's, it's our friend Steve asking me to call him, but it was a little late. You said, you know, six o'clock, don't call. And that's when I checked it. I'm like, I'll give him a call later on. I'll see if everything's okay. Uh, but again, Chewy, I know nothing is written in stone and it's not your fault. You Thank you very much for introducing me. Such a nice gentleman. I'm, honored to be part of the fish fam and he he spoke you know he like he knows you as a brother i can tell you guys are close friends for a long time which is very i'm honored for that you know you got me hooked up with him okay that sounds good i like to talk, speak to you uh also if you have a time if you like to come up to my uh, stream you are welcome anytime uh, I like to speak to you you are a very helpful person you help the whole fish fam I've been part of it you know since I've been part of it everybody knows you sir yes thank you So anybody have questions about the breeding, let me know. Uh, so the rams. I learned the same thing with the German rams. When the male and female breed, you either take the fry out or take one of them out. They are going to kill each other. Didn't know about that, about ram. I found my female dad. Didn't know why. Daddy raised the babies. Okay. Didn't eat them or anything, but that is happening. So either you take the dad out or mom out or take both, take the fry out, you know, raise them on top or put a marina side box. Now that would work. If you take the fry out and put it in a marina side box, connect to the same water of the fish tank, that one's successfully working. But, you know, you can only keep it there for so long and do your water changes and, uh, when the fry gets a little bigger, transfer them in a 10 gallon. Also, after that, then on and on. So, DEA Exotics, hello, welcome, welcome. Long time no see, my brother. Um, I haven't been following much about snake people. I mean, I still have them, bull pythons. I love them. They're getting big, they're happy, healthy. Uh, I'm not slacking on them, they're all good. Um, I haven't killed one. 
ever or ever like since I started it. So I did sell a few this year, not whole lot, maybe ten of them, somewhere around there. So I had some problems, some of them eating. I they are okay, but slow slaggers eating. But you know, I keep offering, they keep picking it back up. Ball pythons can be finicky eaters sometimes. Um, I cut those eggs a little early because the eggs look sunk thin. And uh, like the 50th day, didn't wait, did not that early. Usually you wait 55 days. Or I usually see one pipping and I cut, you know. Uh, not too many clutches this year, only got like four, maybe five. Uh, some eggs I lost. I made what I wanted. I made the genetic stripe coral glow pastel, which I really like that snake. I made it, you know, bred the coral glow to the G strap, took the boy, the baby, back to the mom in the following year, and got some eggs. Some of them survived, some of them didn't, and that's how I got it. Uh, if anybody in my uh, fish fam, DEA Exotics, uh, if you don't know who that is, that's, uh, I don't know if he wants me to say his name. He usually doesn't let people say his name. So he's my buddy. Uh, please, he does the same thing I do. He keeps fish, aquatics. He knows a lot about this case, angels, uh, and he keeps ball pythons. I know a lot of other stuff. I've been off his channel, like, you know, not messing around. Sometimes I leave people alone. They're like, hey, this guy again, he showed up. Oh, what do you want now? What's up, man? <laughs> uh, but I'm not like that. You guys are all welcome. I never say that, you know. Someone today said, hey, I a long time no talk. It's been, you know, sometimes I leave people alone. I don't mess around with them. So what else I learned? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to tell you guys this. Very important. Let me show you. Really quick sample. This size, River Rock, look how big they are. I said those are no-no for aquarium tanks. Why? Let's say you took a bunch of it and stacked it on top of each other in the back of the tank. Bunch of detritus, bunch of poop, uh, yucky stuff gonna be underneath. Some of you think that's okay. I think that is not okay, guys, because that is poop. You need to take it out with this, with the, with this. They call it python, you know? If you don't take it out, look what's going to happen. See this one's green? It's going to cause hair algae. You can take months and months and months removing that hair algae as long as you got poop. Because with this python, you can't go. You see? Too big. So stacking them on top of each other, river that. Bad idea, don't do it. I don't recommend this. Totally bad idea. Maybe few here and there decoration, that's all, totally fine. But taking bunch in the back of it, making the height in the back of the tank, do not do that. Or the front of the tank or anywhere in the tank because it's going to cause detritus. You want to, if you have gravel, especially not sand, sand is cool. Uh, sand, I like a lot because. All the stuff stays on top. You can just vacuum clean on top. It's very good. You know, maintenance is important. Um, as you see in my some of my tanks, I have slimy green algae. Why, you say, George, you are cleaning the water, right? Why are you getting that? And believe it or not, I leave some of my lights on for days and days and days. Why? Because I have fry in the tank. Mom and dad can see it. Don't think it's predator and <laughs> eat them. Like zebra, akaras, I fry, I keep a light on. Until the, I move the mom and dad out of the tank by swimming by himself, then I'll start turning off. That's why I like to do 
that to the tanks that didn't have any plants in them, don't have any substrate. So if it, that happens, you know, clean up that green algae. Sometimes fry eat that. Um, some fish like it. But if you have placos, the best food, grow one baby placo, grow them up in that algae dub tank. And then the next day, just clean up the poop. That's it. Very simple, you know. Oh, Chewy asked. Chewy, bro, I am enjoying those tanks. I learned few of my uh, hammer corals died. Few, three of them. One of them is about to go. Which one's dying? Those thick branching hammers. And I was adding magnesium, calcium. And that time, I slowed down on that a little bit because I was I was being told from another hobbyist that don't add anything in your tank uh, for the first year. Uh, but some people say you need to add a few things. It's essential. You have to have it. If you don't have it, you'll kill your corals. Everything looking great. I don't mind going in the house showing you, but I'm afraid of the internet getting cut up. And um, if we are doing great on the internet, I want to take a walk around the fish room and maybe show you guys some of the fish tanks. Uh, I do have Avatar, fries. Yeah, I took another one. Yeah. Meaning that I took another batch. I'm super excited. Uh, behind me, right in that other tank right there, the avatars are growing out. Those are my pride and joy. I know, you know why? Because I like the blue fish. I love blue fish. I love red fish. I love red fish, blue fish. Jason is my brother. I haven't seen him uh, doing a lot. We hope we see him soon. But, you know, if you guys know about fish coming from outer seas, it's been very hard lately, like overseas and stuff. And he only gets the best stuff. So he's having a little hard time and he had to pray for him. Everything goes good. He had a electricity shut off. He had to go buy a generator, all kinds of dilemma, guys. Sorry. Um, I hope he's all doing great. Back on his feet soon. When, when I... Let me get some fish for him. Man. I I pick his mind one of those days with about the clownfish because that's my goal. I do have a pair out here in the 40 gallon breeder. Uh, there is a naso tank in there. I want to know if should I take, take the naso tank out, put something in there. I got two terracotta pots. They're just clownfish. You know how it is. Hello. Okay, guys, I have a question. I know, I know, look, everybody got their opinion. Just like I have my opinion, you have your opinion. I want to ask you a question. Because I haven't had any problem with RO DI that I, the water that I use, RO, they saying, people saying that don't get into it, don't use it, don't have to buy that machine. Yeah, it's true. If you but if you want to keep certain fish, uh, like to breed, you essential need that. Not keep. Kind of you can keep soft water fish in the hard water. It all depends, you know, how where where limit it is. Uh, they can get used to it, especially the aquarium hobbyist fish that bred in the home. Uh, what I do, especially, let's say I bred my angels in the soft water, but I want to sell it to the LFS. And I know that LFS uses only hard water. I learned my LFSs. That's how you have to be. Nobody tells you these secrets, guys. Like, literally. Um, so what, how, what I'm saying, I learned my LFS. LFS is not perfect. Just like you, nobody is. They do mistakes with you, with everybody else. Uh, they try you. They give you chances. So you got to play their game and their game. And it's not cool sometimes, but you want to make a couple bucks. You got to play their game, your game, whatever game you can play.
Yes, I do know about tank secrets a lot. Uh, but I like to learn more and have different species, work with different species, sell, sell the ones I'm having successfully. But I feel like, you know, if I take him to my LFS, let's say he sells them for 40 bucks a fish, he's going to give me 10. Uh, let's say he sells them for 20, he's going to give me 5. Let's say he sells them for $3, he gives me maybe 70 cents. <laughs> so, yeah, you know. That's why I kind of thinking about getting a website and posting up what I have, prices, and go on from there. Put my PayPal account. I'll be overnighting. If the customer's not happy, I can pay him money back, you know, next day, stuff like that. So I can do a legit business. I don't want to mess, start something and mess it up in the end. So I kind of, I'm kind of guy, I like to study uh, what I'm getting my, hands into before I do it uh, because, you know, it's better be, be safe than sorry cover your butt, they say, right? So that's why maybe I don't have a thousand followers on YouTube because I don't care about YouTube at all. I'm just ha enjoying my time here, wasting an hour, I feel, because I have dinner waiting for me just to eat yummy. Mm, I haven't eaten yet. Just had a cup of coffee. But again, you know, take it or leave it. I I enjoy the fish fam a lot. I have big respect for the fish fam. But YouTube is not fish fam, just to let you guys know. It's a totally different thing. I like fish. I am a fish hobbyist. Uh, you can see, right? Let's go see some. Uh, if the internet messes up, let me know. Oh man. Fish poster, fish tank. Oh, I got a bunch of nice posters. I got like one, two, three, four posters I'll show them to you in a minute. I'm sure some of you have seen it. Come on, fish cam. What are you? Last time when I did this, I went to the camera. And I started getting close. Oh, look at this camera. Let's let's change the layout really quick. This is gonna show you like far away everything. <laughs> You're gonna see everything. Oh, look, George taking off his river rocks because I'm learned river rocks don't work. Plants grow beautiful, but keep getting algae, keep getting algae. Now I took river rocks out. I can grab a black between the the plants, you know, without killing the roots and stuff, and they still live. And I'm sure algae is not going to grow. Just like other tanks, I've done the same thing. Algae slowly dissipating, going away. So here's my zebra cut off fries and mom. She's going to get a little pissed off. Let me get the camera uh, changed. Good thing so far I can see I haven't gotten... Let me see. Ooh, better. So here we go. All right, guys. So I am using my phone's internet. If it starts messing up, just let me know. Okay. That's the one apistogramma I wanted to show you guys the other day. She is in the back with the fry on the wall. The fry. I have been changing water and scraping the front glass. That's why some algae in the floor. Uh, I'm trying. And you got to keep them happy. Uh, there's a lot of fry. You can't change all the water at once. I'm only changing it little bit by little bit. And this is a, a auto DI water. Uh, this one, I did a water change tonight. Uh, still got a fixed up filter in the back. This is a hard water. That's why water uh, filter gets clogged up. I have to keep messing with the nozzle and thing. This, what I'm trying to say is, this type of filters. Look, I'm gonna explain to you so you understand. It won't be a little bit of LG take out. Come on, guys, bear with me, huh? The thing we're not cutting off. 
So right here, right here, it gets little, uh, you have to twist it every now and then. It gets a little calcified from the hard water, the hardness of the water. So hold on, look down here where the fry is. I'm going to twist it and I'll show you. It starts going like, there you go. I can hear the air going way better now. So before there was like no air. Now let me take off some of that hair. I'll be out of that filter. Okay. Phone, don't go in the tank, okay, son? Stay with me, phone, okay? There we go. It should solve. See, we got bubbles going. Air opened up. I just had to twist that little knob. Got my hands all wet. Okay, I want to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, guys. So, look at all this fry. Oh, those are baby avatars all in there, waiting to be fed right now. Their empty stomach. You can see. And the mom and dad are right there. Gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Look at that coloration on that avatar. Guys, look at that blues on it. Super pretty. That's why they call him Avatar. Look at that guy. And he doesn't have that uh, extra bar in the middle. They have, and the mom doesn't have a, like that one bar in the end. They're almost all silver. Some, some babies have like all silver. Some, not all, like maybe 1%. That's a beautiful fish. And that's the mummy. So what I'm doing here, they're going to go back and breed on that terracotta. Hopefully, they're going to clean it the next week or so. I'll keep feeding them and taking care of them. Water changes. The top is closed. Keep the, the temperature down. Uh, temperature, I keep it down to 82. You can see fry temperature 80, 81. During the day, it gets up to 81, 82. Um, top's not open, top's closed, it will be get hotter. You can make a condensation on top too. So, as you see, a, bleach, a bit glitchy, but stable. Cool. Cool, cool, DA, cool. I'm just talking. That's good. At least it was cutting off too much last time, guys. Way too much. Oh, check this guys out. Hmm. Those are the Tanzanians I bred uh, that I have already fried, and there's some more. I just figured out that I took those uh, Julita Chromis transcriptus pimbas out. When I took them out, the mom and dad just had more fry. And look at these guys, man. Those are the daffodils. I want to take a pair out and breed them in a separate 20 gallon. Later, later. I have a lot. I'm doing a lot. I bred the daffodils, by the way. I have fries of them. Which they are right here. Daffodil fries. Not a whole lot, maybe 15 to 20 of them. Okay, yes. So that one, a pistol, that was a trifaciara. Uh, you see the algae is happening on this thing. Hold on. So it's the same trifaciata line right here. Look at that gorgeous boy. I don't know if you can see him. He's right there, guys. Check him out. Ooh, wow. Wow. Super wow. Bunch of females over there on his right. Uh, there's another male in here somewhere, but he's not that dominant. I'm sure this guy, the front one here, he kicks his butt. Tell him to get back out of here. Uh, so those are my babies. They grew up. I didn't buy this. Uh, 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 what's his name? Vene Kalagapi sent me those parents. I bred them. Um, and those are the babies, and I bred them again. And... and there is some uh, 
Ninchsenai. Three extra males I have here. And there's another pair. So one female I have. That one is the Inca 50 that is still there by himself. I haven't moved them. This one, I tried this Super Agazizi eye. So far, nothing yet. Oh, here, yeah, this is another line of Trifasciata. As you see, it's not, this is a male right here, the dominant one in the tank. He doesn't even look like that guy, right? This is another line of it. So this one I got from Redfish Bluefish. Uh, it, it will still grow. It will still look better than what it is right now. This isn't going to be the final coloration. Absolutely not. They'll change color all the way to the... He gets so big of a... Look at that dorsal venom's on top. So he gets more, more de definitely more colors. As you see, there's a bunch of them in here. Uh, they like planted tanks. They like, you know, prefer to put mops like this so they kind of take side of you out. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, the mama's still here. Their mom, she's still here, but she, something wrong with her, like, Swimming funny, guys. Like when what happened, I think stress caused it. But you know, there's other things. Oh, yeah, look at that. Uh, Siromigo Percara, I think. Uh, if what's that uh, called? What was it? What was it? Siromigo something. Hold on, I, I, my Siromigos, I don't know exactly the name. It's, it's if it's not the Percara, it's the other one. This guy has like white on his back, they always breed in this mop's full of eggs. Got some guppies going on, some tuxedo. Also, let me give you a quick secret about guppy breeding. Let's say you got a pair of guppy you want to breed. Uh, this right here, cover the top, glass, put the basket in. This is a big basket. It has, you know, holes in it. Parents are in there. And the fry will be dro dropping. There's a fry right there. These ones are good yet, guys. I'm breeding some good yet. Uh, here's some CPDs. What you call it? Out soon because it's been here for like uh, six days or so. Mm, I got a new Santa Maria guppies. Hoping to see some price soon. Here's a female. I was waiting to for this. These females are literally sold for 100 bucks each. They are hard to find, guys. You know, if you know Santa Maria guppies, you only see the males. You don't see the females. Uh, yeah, so if you have the females, good quality line, uh, you're lucky. And hopefully, hoping, oh, Miss Aquabos, I hope you turned off the stove. I mean, the oven, not burning our dinner. <laughs> TVCK. Hello, welcome. Uh, where are you from? TVCK said hi to me today. Uh, I feel like he is from another country, not from U.S., but we can stay, we can always, I'm from where? Belia. Bel 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 okay. I don't know where that is. Sorry, sir. Or ma'am. Uh, so this is the Santa Maria Gapi. White Cloud, yeah, bro. I've been wanting to say hi to you for a while too. I can't believe you say you you showed up here, buddy. Uh, I'm honored, my friend. You are awesome. I was uh, talking about you today on one of the YouTubers channels. He got some white clouds from, and uh, what's it called? It no, some uh, shiners from you. I still have your shiners, the first generation. I have some babies growing up, hoping that uh, these are my 
my uh, babies right here, hoping to breed them this coming year, you know. And I'm doing more into the pistogramas and zebra cara. I'm breeding a lot of angels, a lot of angels. I'm like, I'm b- gonna be filled up with a bunch of thousands of angels soon. Uh, so I'm gonna try like to get these tanks emptied up later to put a bunch of angels in there to grow them up. You know, I got this big 120 gallon here. Uh, I'm like, look, already put some koi. That's so how my babies I'm growing up. Getting really beautiful colors on the face of the oranges right there. The bigger they get, the more colors are coming in. There's a couple of koi's. I put some platinum. Oh, here, look at that platinum blue. There's a couple of them in there. Hoping they're a pair. Grow them up for me to breed them. Right now, I don't have a, a mom and dad I sold. At the moment, I wanted to. You know, ease up on my tank. That tank is like got all kinds of stuff. The, you gotta see this thing. Hold on. Come on, light. Where are you? I'll get a light. Hold on. I have so much fish in that tank right now. Shiners, Tanzanians, rainbows. It's like this is the world wild fish tank. Oh, yeah, check it out. So, guys, I got, got the uh, getting cut up a little bit. I see the internet getting cut up a little bit, because, you know, where I am. So, check out this tank. I have a lot of fish in there. A lot of Corridoras in the bottom. A lot of Corridoras. There's a bunch of Corys. Like, and there's that's a gold ocelotas, Tanjanikan. Today I put two female. Uh, let me see where they went. I put the two female Alto Lamprologues orange uh, Calvis. The male all of a sudden got either bullied by those two girls. Because he passed away on me. I was sad, but guys, it happens. You know, I, I understand. Thank God I have some fry, like maybe 25 or so from that one breeding I did. We'll see what happens in the future. It takes a long time for them to grow up. I, the fry is like six months old or so. They're still tiny. Well, I don't see those girls. They're in here somewhere. Well, no, there they are. Here they are. This, this tank is so big, it's not even joke. Here's one of them. Give them the shells that they were in. And so they're going to be next to the shells and they feel comfortable. This is a, like a big pool for us, guys. And I can literally go inside. It will, it will fit three of me in here. Maybe one day we get too hot. Take a dunk in there. Just kidding, guys. There's my mangrove tank, just got mangrove, nothing in there. Some snails and mangroves. Mangrove. Marine tank. Yeah, Danny, they do grow super slow. Oh, wow, the sombus grow a little faster. Uh, I do have some right here. Hold on. Sombu, sombu, sombu. Little, little, little ah, not that much, but look, you see the babies? They're growing good. I got a bunch of them. Hey, oh, look at that one. Those are the sombus. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This tank, guys, is amazing. Let me take the light out there. Very quick. The wifey. If you don't wait for me, just have the dinner, baby. I love you guys. Eat. I'll be there whenever I can. Sorry, I'm making you dizzy. Trying to share some thanks. You know, it's been a long time. Like last time video was very horrible. Uh, I deleted it all up. Here is some other multifaciadas. Ooh. Multifaciadas, those balloon ones are no longer in there. I took them out, they're in that big tank somewhere in there. And here's my 
Perasipochromis nigra pinis blue neon. These are amazing fish. I really, really want to say this is my favorite fish here right now. Oops. George did a no no. Okay. You get out of there right now. This thing you're trying to fall in the water. Look. So that means it's goodbye power thingy. Okay. Here we go. Check this tank. Just recently, I set this one up with, uh, you know, this was underneath. I had uh, my red madaka fish inside. My red madakas growing bigger. You see right there? There's six of them. Yeah, guys, I would like to breed these red madakas in the future. Totally would love to breed them. Okay, check out these guppies. Are some of the ones I might not, you know, just took. They didn't look so good. Just put them here because they look cool in this tank. Uh, this is like a litter, seven and a half gallon. Anybody starting a new tank, just get a litter. Uh, like the other day, I was at the fish store. I saw a nice lady. She was like, you know, wanting to know if she can put some big fish, which was discus in her tank. And I said, uh, what kind of tank it is? I asked her, you know, I kind of got noisy. And she said that she had a 20 gallon with plants in it. And she was wondering if she can put discus in it. I was like, no, 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 you can put it, but there is no filter, not a good idea. And so I recommend her angels said, do two, but put sponge filter, airline, a little air stones or the bubbles go slow, smooth like that, not big and ununiform. So I got air stone in my sponge filters. Hello, Melvin Reef. Melvin Reef, hello, welcome. Motor City Aquatics, hello, welcome. Mr. Grumby, hello, hello, welcome. And Danny, you too, welcome. <laughs> Oh, who else came in? I didn't say hello. Everybody here's good. So, yeah. And, you know, she went and bought uh, a small air pump, a line, a sponge filter, some air stones. And she was a teacher at school. And she's going to set up a nice uh, fish tank for her kids. She had it, but she said it was murky. She showed me it was totally, like, very murky. So that could be two things. Murkiness could be, you know, biological filters not doing their job or could be green water guys agua verde green water now that one doesn't have a light on it right now but i do have it about 18 hours of light on that thingy and there's fry in there that one's good water that's the magic water so yeah you know eventually if you leave the lights on for 24 hours and you feed in the tank uh, the color will turn green like that. Especially if you don't change too much water on it. These are some uh, tiger mosaics. That's a nice male. But he's not the nicest. I, I'm, I'm kind of going to breed this to my colony. I'm calling those ones out. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. These are my call outs. So the main tank that I'm going to be breeding uh those in is over there so i'm like picking up the best looking ones keeping the best females there's so many things into guppies you need to learn a lot of us we just put two guppies together and breed them that's not that so there you got to look at some guppy body shapes so you don't want the guppies too humpy you don't want them flat you don't want the tails certain way you want the good colors you see these ones are shiny and nicer colors than the other one like there's no light on this kind of like the light's not as good as the other one over there and some of these are females that one's really nice and fiery that's what i'm going for that beautiful red and the orange color with bodies green you see there's green in the body so that's the tiger mosaic which i told you i'm gonna crossbreed this one back 
through another Dumbo mosaic. So now uh, I'm going to be taking a male and female here somewhere else, breeding those, taking some of the babies back to auntie and uncle. So stuff like that has to happen. You got to inbreed to get your line stable, guys. And But, you know, not brother, sister, auntie, uncle, mom, back to the son, uh, dad, back to the daughter would work. So, cross with you. Auntie, uncle's better. So you got to stable your line. You have to. And if you don't do that, your guppies will start looking very awful. No colors on them. If you just leave a bunch of guppies together, do that thing, they call those mud guppies eventually. So many things to do in fish breeding hobby. Uh, temperature, water quality, sky's the limit. Oh, yeah. Check this tank out. This little is kind of this was at the, at the verge of going green. I turn off the light. You see, it's kind of green water, but it's not as green. But there's fish in there. They're all okay. They're getting bigger, actually. Hey, what's happening? More. Uh, what is this one? This was actually. Hold on. Oh yeah, those was the koi. The koi. I got males and females in the basket. It's a big basket. Huh? It's not a tiny basket. It's almost the length of the whole 10 gallon. So I put the uh, mom and dad in there with a bunch of plants. Uh, duckweed. I'm not duckweed. What is it? On top, there's duckweed, but there's the guppy grass in there. So dad don't chase the mom too much. And they're healthy looking male and female. Very beautiful looking. Zebra cara with a bunch of fry, guys. Look at that. So beautiful. I love this. Every day I watch her and she's like, great mom, tell me to back off. And that's a daddy. That's a daddy. He's a little uh, mad looking right now. He wants to beat me up saying, get the hell out of here, dude. Okay, buddy. Later. Here we go. We got some platinums going up. These are available. If anybody would like some of my platinum blue angels, I do have about, let's say we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about 10 of them, eight to 10. Uh, koi, I got one, two, three, four of them. What koi is here? That's all I got right now. I mean, those other ones in the other tanks, I don't want to let go of those yet. Just for if anybody interested. Now, it's, uh, you know, not trying to sell you any fish or anything. I know some of you will say, hey, how can we get some of your fish, buddy? You can contact me. I will put my email on the bottom of the video when I'm finished. Um, email me. Give me phone number. I'll give you my phone number. We can message back and forth. And then we go on from there. And I'll tell you where you live and how it is. Canada and everybody else. Where else I can? Only USA. Okay. I got some uh, pickup cousins, babies growing up. Um, they're still small. About like a half an inch. They get about, they get big. They get in about an inch and a little bit. Um. I do have daddy still. I'm waiting. I got other boys in there, so I see it. So pika cousins are easy. That one's a female. Easy to sex. The middle big one is a boy. This is my favorite, favorite tank lately too. <laughs> Not my favorite fish. Fish is gorgeous. My favorite tank. Why? Because of the a lot of beautiful wild fish that is hard to breed, guys. It's in here. Inca. 50, a pistol grama, Inca 50, beautiful fish. Uh, they bred a lot of them in there. There's like maybe 20, 25. They're getting to the size. They're a little slower grower for some for some reason. And this tank is planted, as you see. I, I just did a recent uh, work. I leave some algae on the glass, guys. I don't scrape everything. Uh, Breeding tanks, algae is not bad. Thing. Algae is actually consum consumption of uh, nitrates and all that bad thing. And then ammonia, if there's ammonia, we'll get rid of it.
Mama is in there somewhere with the babies. I haven't taken it out yet. There's one of the babies growing bigger. These guys are slacking, but I'm not giving up on them. They will give me more fry later, but they're paired. Okay, I checked the pair on this. These are $200 pair almost. So we can't give up on them, guys. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we can't give up on them. These guys uh, got our... Oh, what's going on in the back? I think... Wait a minute. I think... Now, a lot of you would think this is a boy. That's a girl. I would say they're different. Opposite. Or could be both boys. So, I don't know yet until they actually start showing me signs of reading. Either lip locking or the body parts. Which I seen this one. Let me see if I can get closer. You can see in the bottom, there's a little arrow. And that one, it doesn't show, which is a good sign of being a female until it shows when it's breeding. That one doesn't show, guys. For some reason, I am thinking this is a female. And she's, it's a, I'm going to call her a female right now until it's proven guilty. Okay? So she's a really gorgeous blue marble, uh, blue marble angel. Really nice beautiful pair if they are going to be a pair one day and and I would love to breed these guys to my avatars my avatar tank right there mm -hmm. guys LFS told me he would buy every one of those every one of those babies but they're still tiny I'm growing them up hi Patty welcome back baby fish that is true oh i want to show you the parents first i cleaned up the algae so you can see them uh the the tank it's not clean because it's a used tank i got it for free and i'm using it that's okay like this one here i'm doing water change on it right now what a change this bucket is not going to the trash, but it's going outside in the pond. And there could be a bunch of hundreds of fry in there. I don't even know. I'm not just going to throw my algae. I just siphon and stuff out of there. There's a bunch of sunfish fry in there. So could have sucked one up. You can see, right? Okay, guys. Here's the pair. I did the duty of breeding them. And then I took them and put them right in this tank. Well, if when they were breeding, they were in this tank. I'm teaching you, ah, huh? you learn. Tell me how it works for you. And then look, babies are all in there. Now, you're not going to see the babies in the back because that is a lot of algae. But look at the babies in the front. About another 15 to 20 babies in the back. There was about 50 of them in here. This wasn't a big batch, hoping the second one. This And these guys, they paired up in another tank. I seen them. I kept an eye on them. One of them died. Not not the pair, but I had four. The other one I have. I have the third one. It's a, it's a male. So the fourth one passed away. But uh, these two became a pair. And now they are becoming a fantastic breeding pair. And the babies are only... Two and a half weeks old. You can see their uh, fins are developed already. And these are growing really quick. Uh, gorgeous fish. You saw it, right? It's going to it's gonna have different varieties. Looks like this one, like right there. Little wider color. That one's a little darker color. Oh, yeah. Come back. So you see, right? Another sad news. Aquamelic asked me the other day, hey, I want those blue galaras. If you breed them, please. Sorry, Melik. Blue galaras male passed away, Gary. If I found them again, I would definitely bring them and breed them. But uh, this this male wasn't that strong. From the beginning, I kind of had a hunch. He wasn't like too enticed with the female. I got him into the soft water. I had heater. I took it out and... I found them passed out today. So I took his female, saved it in another tank, and hopefully we get another pair. They were here. 
And now this tank kind of kind of wait for another angel pair to breed somewhere, which those guys might come over here because they already bred again. So I'm just going to be hopping parents. You know? And have a bunch of tanks. Baby fish, baby fish, baby fish. This is my method. It works for me, guys. Sorry. There's a million other methods you can follow. But this one, it's convenient for me. I don't have to go get nothing. No screwdrivers, no nothing. No air pumps extra. No, 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 I hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, session with Aquaballs, Georgie. Uh, the internet wasn't so bad, right? 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 Um, I think so. It was great. And I enjoyed having fun with you guys. These buckets are saltwater mixes in there, meaning that I'm hanging out with you. I've had fun hanging out with you guys. And I really appreciate every one of you showing up tonight. Saying what's up. I know I don't want to hold you guys uh, all night long here. Um, all these fish right here, you see, are available. Like literally, except the daffodils. Daffodils are not the babies. The other ones are my fry. I literally raise them from nothingness. I have the mom and dad in another tank. Of this, these are Parasepichromis, not not those are Sepichromis Laptisoma utenta, I believe, with a yellow tail with a blue body. Daddy is really beautiful. I see one dominant male. Uh, the rest of the brothers, sisters that are kind of not so dominant. Uh, I do have some some of these guys, but I don't want to let go of them. Yeah, I want to grow them up to the big sizes. The about an inch and a quarter. It's going for Good money. I don't want to say prices, guys. There, you know what it is. If you look up the website, you'll know the prices. It's not gonna be more than that. Trust me. I don't want to say prices. It's not because of. Uh, I think uh, I'm thinking because YouTube won't won't allow you sell anything on the platform, so you can't say prices. If anybody, I'm saying you know, wants it, hit me up. I'm not selling you anything. Just fish hobbyists. We sometimes exchange stuff we like. You know, like Maria sent me some of her beautiful epistogrammas. I sent her some of my avatar angels. No one has those avatar angels. Not too many people have them. Not no one have them. Not too many people. They do. Dan Fish brought them. You know, we got 51 state people bought it from him. He sold out quick. They were like hot pancake. They sold out fast and they were not cheap i paid pretty penny and they came here to, you, see, you see they are gorgeous pair uh i got lucky bought a pair and they became a pair you know sometimes uh, the best quantity like to buy is number six six is minimum my favorite but sometimes you know like they it expensive like that come on man it's gonna break the wallet you know, six of them for that price is kind of expensive. I I am trying to get those red red ones in, hoping in the future we'll have some super red angels. We will have some avatars and koi and platinum blue. One thing I might not breed in here is the long fins, like the veil tail. I am trying to get some double blacks, the super blacks. Those are in my list. I know a lot of you asked for those. Um, anything else guys thank you for showing up again have a good night peace happy turkey day 2 for everybody yesterday